What's up GQ, I'm Sean Mendez and I'm going undercover on the internet. This is actually me. Twitter. Sean Mendez said that all the songs he's ever written were about Camila, so where does Where Were You in the Morning fit into the story? All the songs that were about a person were about Camila. That song wasn't actually about a person, and that's the truth of being a songwriter sometimes. Sometimes you're writing about something that didn't happen, maybe that you wish that happened, and that was that song for me. What if Monster is Justin Bieber and Shawn Mendes talking about their fame and the monsters that come with it? Monster is more about how society likes to put celebrities up on a pedestal, but I think society is constantly putting everybody up on a pedestal. I think because we all have social media, we're always either putting each other on a pedestal or tearing each other down. And I think there is a unfair and not possible expectation for perfection that people have to kind of live up to on social media all the time. And Monster is that. And it's really just saying like, what if I trip? What if I fall? Does that make me a monster? And the answer is no. I really hope that that comes across in that way because it's a really important song, I think, for that reason. Okay, let's check out YouTube. I thought they weren't friends at one point. Was that true? <laughs> Justin and I were never like enemies. We were maybe not friends. I mean, yeah, I guess I wasn't texting and being like, yo, how you doing today? But we were never enemies, absolutely. That's um, kind of something that people maybe might have turned it into at some point. When he made that video and he was like, who sh who's Sean Mendes? He said he really genuinely didn't know who I was, and I believed him, so whatever. Maybe he did, and he was just trying to bug me either way. <laughs> but I mean, honestly, I really love him. He's been so sweet and super gracious and giving with his advice and with his energy, so he's a good friend. TikTok. Me, the first time I made a TikTok. Look, that was the third time I made a TikTok and I don't think I'm gonna get much better. I was thinking about just doing exactly what I did on Vine, on TikTok, maybe that'll be good. Boom, <laughs> my grandpa trying to figure out FaceTime. That's how I feel, genuinely. I mean, when I go on TikTok, I feel like a grandpa trying to figure out FaceTime. You have so many filters back in my day. You just had Vine, you had one option. It was, you could record it and stop and then record and stop. You couldn't do reverse, you could, there was no sound effects. It was the good old days. Posted. Instagram. Wait, did you two just get a puppy together or? That's exactly what we got. We got a puppy together and he's over here sleeping. Hey, come here. You wanna come here? No. He's in his I don't listen to anything you say puppy face. Tarzan? You're sleepy? Come. No, not gonna happen. Sorry guys. Tarzan's like 10 weeks right now, but he's growing like super fast. He's looking at me right now. He's like really questioning whether he wants to hang out or not, but come here. Come baby. You wanna say hi? No. This is Tarzan. He's, he, he's, he's really dramatic and he's yawning. What are you stressed about? You're tired. He's nervous and tired. He gets camera shy, I guess. Okay, I'll put you down. Perfect Sean says, what's your favorite track? I can't decide overall, like forever, what my favorite song is, but currently my favorite song on that album is Song For No One. Song For No One ended up being the pillar for what I wanted the album to sound like. And I wrote it three years ago and didn't even know it. So yeah, and it's just a beautiful song. I mean, it's really heartbreaking and lonely and I was lonely and kind of heartbroken at the time and it sounds it because the whole thing is one take through and yeah, I love that song. Seriously, no, it's actually me. Okay, maybe we should go over to Wikipedia, see what they're talking about. Mendez has been open about his struggles with anxiety, which he disclosed publicly through In My Blood, a track from his third studio album. That's super true. I've always been open about anxiety, but it was the first time that I really wanted to write about the severity of it. And it was terrifying. And I thought that a lot of people were gonna be like, he's over the top and dramatic and ungrateful. And I actually ended up getting an overwhelming amount of love, but not only love, but like people, being like, I needed this song, this was the year I needed this song, and even this year, people reached out to me about In My Blood. I think it's gonna be one of those songs that is always necessary because anxiety is always relevant. 
Mendez started attracting viewers after he posted a cover from Justin Bieber's As Long As You Love Me on the social video app Vine in 2013 and got 10,000 likes and as many followers the next day. That's some like phrase that I said when I was like 15 that I just stuck to. I was just like, it got like 10,000 likes and I had like 10,000 followers the next day. Um, I'm not, I don't even know if that's accurate at all, but this is very true. I did a cover of As Long As You Love Me and that's the video that made my Vine account blow up. So thanks, Justin, all these years later. Cora. Does Sean Mendez write his own songs? I do write my own songs. I wonder if the majority of people think I don't, or do. Regardless, I do. That's why I love them so much. I think I was like probably 15 or 16 when I started writing songs for the first time. They were really not great. And then I wrote a lot of songs. And Ed Sheeran has this metaphor about songwriting. He's like, it's like an old tap that hasn't been working for a long time. You turn the tap on and let the dirty water pour out until clean water starts pouring out. It's like the same metaphor for writing songs. And I always find that after not writing songs for a few months, if I want to write again, I have to let myself let that dirty water kind of wash through before I got the good ones. Next. When did Shawn Mendes start to sing? I started to sing when I was probably 10 or 11, maybe even 12. I mean, genuinely mean this. I wasn't a great singer. My sister would tell you that's true, but I just loved singing and I would watch videos of like Bruno Mars or Justin Bieber or Ed Sheeran singing and I would sit there in my bedroom and just try to mimic their vocal things and found my own voice through that process. <laughs> Treat you better. Is this also for Camila Cabello? This is definitely for Camila Cabello. And I think, I mean, I was 17 when I was writing that song and she wasn't even in a relationship. I just maybe through the grapevine heard that she had feelings for some guy and I was like, I'm gonna write an entire song and do a video about this. <laughs> what are you ordering from Tim Hortons? If I do happen to go to Tim Hortons, I will get most likely a chocolate chip muffin or one single Timbit. In America, you call them donut holes, I think, or the hole of the donut. I don't know if you sell those in America. Munchkins are donut holes, Timbits, all the same guy. What do you miss most in Canada? I was telling Camila this yesterday, actually. I was talking about how in Toronto there's this camaraderie in the wintertime that you get because the weather is really kind of mean and unforgiving, so people really come together. And it's like the first thing anyone ever says to each other when you walk into a room is like, it's cold outside, isn't it? And it's like this really nice camaraderie that we have. But you would only understand if you're from Toronto, so I miss that a lot about Canada. And my friends and family, of course. You might not believe it, but it's actually me. This account is called Sean is Soft. <laughs> I thought that you don't dance. I guess I was wrong. I do dance. I don't know if I dance great though, but you know what? Maybe I do dance great. Maybe I'm a great dancer. Who knows? I'm not gonna put any boxes on that. I'm pretty sure I was just like trying to be a TikToker. I've never felt like an older man in my life. Oh, look who's back. Look who came back. Oh. I'm sorry, but Sean, you seriously need to release a hair routine. How is it structured so fluffy, curly, shiny, and more? How is it, how am I doing today? The truth is, it's all about the lighting and a good haircut, and I have the best hairstylist in the world, Anna Burnaby. She cuts my hair amazing, and she gives me all the products that like look good in it. There's a product that I use that's called Inner Sense, a leave-in conditioner, then a curl cream definer. <laughs> Just a, a whole lot of love. I think the truth about hair is that you gotta like rock the hair that your hair wants to be. You can't just force your hair to be something it's not and that's it, you know? Gotta love the hair. Sean should make one of those podcasts where he just is talking about calming things while we drift into sleep. I would love to do that for, for everyone and for myself. I've thought about doing a podcast a few times. The time will come when it's right and just talk about waves crashing along the water. One day I went on a walk down this beach and it was gorgeous and there was a sunset and I was reminiscing of a friend of mine from when I was 11 years old and stuff like that. Did you know this song inspired the sound of the album because his sister was listening to it and she showed him with like sad faces? I did know that and I guess obviously I knew that. But yeah, my sister inspired the album by playing me Can't Take My Eyes Off Of You by Frankie Valli. I owe her one, I guess. I got a whole album after that. All right, GQ, that's it. I'm signing off the internet. Goodbye. Love you.